Lime has helped shape Scotland's architecture since Roman times. In very general terms, building lime um, is made from extracting limestone from a quarry or out of the ground, and then it's processed in a lime kiln uh, to a state which renders it down to a malleable form to allow for building, plastering, rendering and lime washing. In a traditionally built Scottish house, the walls are founded on a base of lime concrete and built with natural stone or brick embedded in lime mortar. Externally, the wall often has a lime harling, while inside a lime plaster provides a clean finish. The UK's largest lime works was in Fife. Well, here in Charlestown, this was the home of the biggest lime works in the whole of the UK uh, and produced a huge tonnage of, of, of quick lime that went out on boats as far as Orkney, Nova Scotia, Scandinavia, all up and down the east coast of Scotland and, and England. It was a huge, huge operation. Out with the central belt, um, the deposits of limestone are much, much uh, smaller. Um, where there was no lime um, at all, uh, particularly parts of the Western Isles, for example, they would burn oyster shells or cockle shells, which chemically is the same as calcium carbonate, limestone, um, and they could produce building lime and agricultural lime in exactly the same way, heating them up in a kiln. As a natural material, lime mortar acts with the natural world, not against it. It allows a wall to breathe, to absorb moisture and condensation that then evaporates as conditions dry. This is known as breathing wall technology. When inappropriate modern material such as cement is used to repair traditional lime-based hull or mortar, the breathability of traditional walls is lost. Water becomes trapped in the fabric of the building because the breathing system has been smothered. In the 20th century, um, lime mortar, uh, the use of lime mortar demised uh, significantly and was replaced with what we know today as modern, ordinary Portland cements. And it was increasingly realised that the use of these overly hard, dense, brittle materials would actually accelerate the decay of traditional uh, stone masonry buildings. Um, and so it was around about the 1980s, 1990s that uh, we woke up to this and realised that we ought to be using like-for-like like materials, so replacing lime mortar with lime mortar uh, and not with uh, cement-based mortars. Traditional buildings reflect not only their indigenous culture, but their local geological quirks. A lime wash finish, for example, takes on the colour of the earth it is mixed with. In the central belt, this gives rise to vibrant yellow lime washes, the colour coming from the ochre found alongside the area's substantial coal fields. If you look at the, the, the Great Hall at Stirling Castle, for example, the surface finishes there with that lovely uh, warm, terracottery, yellowy colour. Um, that was based on fragments of coloured lime wash uh, that, in fact, I uh, found while working with the archaeologist on the project, and that informed what went back. Um, and I can imagine the residents of Stirling were horrified at first, uh, but I think uh, it was a very bold step by Historic Scotland to uh, reinstate lime finishes externally. After all, it was a king's palace. It was meant to be seen. It was a beacon. Um, and so it's very important to get over to uh, the public that Scottish um, masonry buildings aren't dour, exposed rubble masonry. They were finished in lime. Traditional buildings are eminently repairable and maintainable, whereas modern buildings very often, if a component um, fails, um, it's thrown away. Um, but uh, repair uh, and maintenance items like repointing, re-lime washing and so on increase the longevity of traditional buildings. So it's really important that the skills and knowledge to, to repair those properly is, is kept up. From the limestone of central Scotland to the lime made from seashells in the Western Isles, lime has helped to make and colour many of our most distinctive and iconic buildings.